On this week's distributed data show, we want to talk Cassandra tooling because that's a narrow topic, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I immediately my head just exploded thinking about all the, the possibilities. Well, um, you know what? Let's just let's unpack this a little bit at a time. OK, talk through the wide world of what's available and um, some options and then our wish lists. That sounds like a plan. From Datastax, this is the Distributed Data Show. Because I can, I can tell you a few of the tools that I've been using recently. Okay. Um, a lot of what I've, I've used just kind of hacking around to do sample CQL and get some things put together to show customers and to work through questions of my own. Okay. I've been using DataGrip a lot. DataGrip, okay. Yeah, so that's a, that's a JetBrains, basically like a data IDE. And it's... Ah, yeah. okay. In the IntelliJ family of stuff. Exactly. Okay. And one of the cool things is, too, a lot of the capabilities in it, such as the autocomplete around CQL, things like that, yeah, yeah. it's available in IntelliJ or Goland or WebStorm or whatever. So oh, you I have can, to try this out. Okay. Yeah, you can add the plugin, but DataGrip itself is solely focused around working through CQL queries and, and also a bunch of other databases that are based around SQL. Okay. So like you can bounce back and forth within the same project and write up your queries and just just keep working at it. It kind of brings all the little pieces that you need together from your connections to your uh, you know, your different syntax, like it does the highlighting yeah, and all yeah. that stuff for you. So it's it's a pretty great tool, but that that's the one I've been using the most lately. Okay, so data grip is that giving me? Um, I'm trying to think about uh, my Cassandra development process start to finish. Right, I want to. Yeah. Um, think about my application. What are my what are my access patterns going to be? I need mm -hmm. queries. I'm going to design a data model for that. Then right. I'm going to be actually maybe testing out, writing some CQL queries to sort of actually get the feel for my table. Um, can I insert and get data out in the way that I expect? Then I want to write application code on top of that. Right. Um, then I want to find out how my cluster is doing. Am I killing it? Do I have a bad data model? Like yeah. So I mean, there could be tools at many points along this spectrum. Where does, where does the data grip fit in exactly? So the way I kind of see data grip, and yeah. I'm not even sure what other, it, other people might use it from a different perspective, yeah, but yeah. like what I have been doing with it is I'll actually start a project, say in Goland or mm -hmm. IntelliJ or some other editor like Visual Studio Code, yeah. and I'll get the base of the project, mm -hmm. but then I always have a schema migrations library where I'm like, all right, this thing is gonna be what builds up the data structure for the tables and whatever other else that okay. I need to work with. And then it might put in some like initial data for testing or something like that. But from there, I don't really use the IDE that's specific to the language I'm writing with. Yeah. So I switch out to data grip to write a bunch of the other queries where I'm like trying to work through individual things where like I need to figure out how to sort this and how should this work with this thing right. and just a lot of create and destroy, i.e., you know. So you're saying that Cassandra is not create. your only database and uh, you, you use other databases? Sometimes and... I do. <laughs> okay, no, that's reality, right? Cassandra yeah. isn't the perfect uh, perfect database for every use case. Right. So, okay, so I guess part of your, and you're developing in multiple languages right. with multiple databases. So you exactly. have like this combinatorial yeah, thing. And so you're saying data curve is kind of your go-to a lot of the for time the, for the data portion right exactly of and, your application and okay. so often a lot of the time when somebody else gives me a problem they're like here's the five databases i'm using and trying to collect something from right <laughs> easiest way to do <laughs> yeah. that pull out data grip and okay like i can get into all of them from right. one place i don't okay. have to like have five different tools up um so that's that's great for that but still as I get back into the app dev side, I always roll back into like the Goland right. editor or one of the other things that's more specific to like the language. And then I kind of mix and match between the two. Okay, so this is so. one of the dilemmas that I want to ask you about, right? Um, we all know that Cassandra data modeling is different. And when you yeah. approach data modeling for Cassandra, you need to be thinking about your queries and designing mm -hmm. tables around those queries. Um, what I always am afraid of and like using more of a general purpose um, data access or data modeling tool is that it's going to try to enforce, it's going to naturally want to lead me down some relational <laughs> mode yeah. of thinking and then it's not going to be designed around right. um, Cassandra data modeling. So I've seen a couple of different tools out there for Cassandra data modeling. Um, like there's a KDM tool, 
that is built based oh. off on uh, our friend Artem Chabaco's kind of his methodology for oh, doing right. standard data modeling. That's a pretty cool tool. Um, it tends to be like a forward engineering. It doesn't really do reverse engineering, but it's kind of like one way um, access pattern table, uh, oh, spit yeah. that out at the other end. Um, but then there's other tools like I've seen Hackalade, which is a little bit right. similar to Data Grip. It does a lot of the similar things. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, uh, I have maybe have this bias, but I, I'm like, can a general purpose data modeling tool really get Cassandra data modeling right? That's that's a good question. Because even in data grip, when I'm doing it, there's various uh, elements of it where it's very clear that it's kind of a SQL first thought. Yeah. Uh, for instance, when I create a key space, you go in and you have to know that you click new database. Yeah, right. And that's, that's like, that's a broken paradigm, but it still understands CQL enough that it gives me the key space yeah. uh, syntax to create the key space, which is correct, but it's just in the editor, certain pieces just aren't going to change because they're modeled around a relational structure. So that is a little weird. It gives me the central tool, but it's still frustrating whenever I break out of the relational paradigm. And even like if I, I step into, say, uh, trying to get into some graph queries or something like that, yeah. then I still have to leave the editor. Right. Because there isn't that like central editor where I can get into any aspect of, say, data stacks enterprise where you got graph analytics or whatever. Right. Um, so that's that's a little bit of a, a gruff point. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I, I understand. We don't necessarily even have like the one unified data modeling tool, even for the different languages that we support, right. query languages that we support within our our own product. And that's really because some of the paradigms are so different. Right. I'm not even sure it would be well, possible to build a tool that built me a graph schema and a CQL table with right. like kind of the same structure and visualization of things. Yeah. Gremlins would talk be about head the, exploding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, in a, in a lot of ways too, I wouldn't think it would be even ideal to try to bring all those things to into, force fit. Right. 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 It, if anything, it's you still really kind of need to have those notions completely broken apart. Right. Because um, you, you need to be in a different headspace. You need to think from the data perspective a completely different way than when you're, say, writing some Go code or something. Yeah. A like, graph data model yeah. is not the same right. as a Cassandra data model, to exactly. be sure. So, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about wish lists. Um, I would love it. Right. I, I, I've, um, I've definitely seen tools that do a good job of visualizing tables and relationships between tables. Right. Um, but then how do I know if I'm actually designing a model that's a good data model that's going to perform well at scale? See, the way that I yeah. know to do this right now is, well, you write a, a test program that inserts a <laughs> bunch of data into that table right. and then does a bunch of queries and kind of sees how that performs over time. We're, we, know, we, know, we know Cassandra Stress right. that does that. There's some improvements over time. People are building better tools than that um, to be able to do things. But I mean, shouldn't I be able to look at a table and analyze it without having to do a stress test and throw a bunch of data well, at it? And I want an expert mm, system, Adrian. I want an yeah. expert system that looks at my table design and says, you're gonna have a wide partition there. Be careful. Yeah. And, it, and it is, Right now, I don't know of any tools that you can sit down besides pencil and paper and yeah. do the math on like, well, what's going to be the situation if I dump 14 terabytes or petabytes of data into this cluster? Right. Uh, that's that's even tough to do the math on. But otherwise, you know, you just you have to set up a test environment to start figuring out some of those things. It would be great to have an app that could do some of those calculations and determine because we do know the math. I mean, the math right, is provable right. in a lot of these scenarios where like, well, that table structure is going to break once you get to say 60 billion of whatever in it or right. something, you know, like th there's <laughs> measurable things. So having a application that can give us some baselines would be great. Um, but speaking of nice to haves on top of that. Yeah. Give me your wish list. I went off on mine, so it's only fair. I've always kind of had a, a, a soft spot in my heart for user experience design. Yeah. Largely because I've seen more than a few apps myself and thought, ah, how do, you, how do I even use this? It's kind of like wireframes. Yeah, kind of wireframes. Mm -hmm. But just the thinking of what, is, what does the application actually need to do yeah. before I even get way down into the data? Right. It would be nice to kind of 
piece together some basic understandings of what I do have. Like I have this, this data so far, and then I have this domain idea. And like, I kind of am going to need this data to like sell a ticket to someone to do this right, thing. Right. Well, I have these pieces. I would love to be able to put that into a system and it starts to kind of show a piece together architecture really. Right. Where I can build from that and even then maybe push code and push CQL to build that out for me. Wow. I would love something like that. And I've seen piecemeal stuff, especially right. for like some of the like 40 year old relational databases, they have like code first stuff or whatever. Yeah. But even then it's so, it's so tightly coupled to the notion mm. of how a relational database works. You can't break away from that very easily. Right, right. So it sounds like science fiction, man. It, like it does. Start with user and, experience <laughs> design first and what? then what? actually derive data and application design off of yeah. that. Well, we were talking about I nice like your to wish have. list, man. Yeah. Nice to have. So yeah. I mean, and I'd love to talk to the computer and say, <laughs> computer, please, you know, Earl Grey, hot. Right. And get that. But I still don't have that computer. That okay, seems well, easy. <laughs> in the absence of that, I think there there is currently no substitute for uh, best practices for understanding what you're doing and creating data models, for yeah. thinking carefully about how wide your partitions are going to get, um, for thinking carefully about how you're going to use that data model mm -hmm. so that you're not designing something that's going to rely on doing lots of lots and lots of deletes <laughs> and creating lots yeah. of tombstones. Um, until we have that automated system that asks you all the right questions, um, I think there's no substitute for best practices and experience. So, yep, keeping a list and checking it twice. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, well, you know, maybe next time we could talk about uh, your your visions for application development in the in the next century. I, I like that. Yeah. I mean, okay. We can look look forward to that future. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs>